Hi guys, it's Nicole and today I am back working in my Easter kit which is the Simple Stories Hip Hop Parade collection. Uh, if you are new to my channel or you're not really sure what I'm doing, I sort of issued a challenge to myself to work through a collection um, like completely, like use it up as much as I possibly can. This is my second round, which is an Easter themed kit, and I'm focusing on my Easter photos, which for whatever reason I've barely touched. The previous one that I did was with a family themed collection using family photo sessions, and then I went sort of diving into more photos when I had worked my way through that session. Um, I will post some links below to those videos in case you have not seen them. And for this specific layout, this is the fifth one that I have done. I do need to go ahead and film like a layout recap and supply recap um, as far as where I'm at in this process. I think the last kit, I did it like every four layouts. Um, I think I'm just kind of a mess right now with everything going on. I have not been really scrapbooking at all. I haven't really been in the mood to it. So this was sort of a struggle bus layout and it took me all day. Basically, I would come up for 20 or 30 minutes and work on it and then leave. I knew going into it that I didn't want to force myself into finishing it in one session just because I knew that I was not going to be okay with the end result. So for me, it works out better to just kind of take smaller bites in a sense. Um, now, again, this is the fifth layout, and this one I am following along with a sketch from the Scrapbook Generation sketchbook called Sketch Magic. Um, if you have the Sketch Magic book, the one that I am doing specifically out of the book is the very last sketch that showcases 17 photos. Um, I already put my layout away. I, one, two, three, I know I got eight on the right two, four, maybe seven. I think I got about 15 on mine. Um, I did change up some of the elements on the sketch, especially on the left side. The left side was more broken up into four by six different areas. I chose to keep my photos in sort of the top third and the lower third and just kind of created a space for a title going across the middle. And then I changed up on the right side, they've got sort of a DIY version of a film strip out of two by two photos. I chose to kind of pull out some extra supplies and I decided to use, um, which you'll see in a little bit, I decided to use a die cut film, film strip in place of that. And then because mine is so small, I'm going to go ahead and substitute the one that they show on the sketch for two. And then also where I had done the large four by six, like text printed cut apart thing on Allison's sketch, she shows a four by six photo. So again, I have no problems changing up a sketch to be able to work with what I have. Um, and I am learning so much about what not to buy when shopping for supplies. Um, I feel like I'm just getting frustrated and annoyed when I'm going to pull papers and I think it's because typically if I am going to use a A-sided pattern or a busy pattern, so in this case what you're seeing on the screen, that egg pattern would be an A-side, the other two patterns would be considered a B-side. I hands down prefer a B side, but I do like a good A side to be able to pull the multiple colors from. And I'm not really sure if it's just the new format of how Simple Stories is doing their patterns. They're still my favorite manufacturer. I think that for whatever reason, I'm just not like 100% in love with every single pattern that's, that's in these collection kits. So I'm not real sure if if I'm going to do a third round of this, if I'm going to stay within a sort of pre-grouped collection kit where you just buy the whole collection from from the manufacturer and it's, you know, one sheet of each pattern, I might almost just make it to where I can cherry pick 
you know, my favorite patterns and then maybe throw in some, some specific B sides and go from there. Um, now I got the brilliant idea to make my own thickers because again, I, when I showed my supply video, I had pulled out a bunch of alphabet dies and my thinking was that I would die cut from the actual pattern papers, but this specific alphabet, which you can just barely see over on the right is very tall and skinny. Um, I thought about using the same yellow checked kind of gingham pattern that I had used on the right hand side of the layout, but that is a large pattern. And I already knew that if I tried to cut a large pattern with a small or thin alphabet that you're not actually going to sort of get that impact of it being a pattern paper. I think you would more so if you had pulled that same pattern from like the six by eight or six by six pad, I think for sure with it being scaled down, you would get that emphasis of it being a patterned letter. Um, so what I ended up doing was I just took out some Bristol smooth cardstock and two distress oxide inks. I took squeezed lemonade and fossilized amber and I just kind of made like a light to a little bit darker um, ombre. I, for whatever reason, I thought that those two colors were very far apart as far as light and dark goes, but they kind of ended up looking like the same color. So a little bit later, you'll see that I'm just going to basically add some more of the darker yellow to get that kind of gradient that I was originally wanting. Um, and then off camera, I did all my die cutting just because it's, it's a pain in the ass to be completely honest. <laughs> like it just takes forever. Um, and I glued all the layers together. So I did four layers total for everything. Now the film strips were all just white cardstock. So those are four layers a piece and I did two of them. And then my letters, I did three layers of a white cardstock with the fourth layer being the one that I had inked up. Um, I do really like these letters. I cannot remember what brand they are. I know a couple times I have gone and tried to find them and I'm going to guess that I probably bought them during a retirement sale or like a Facebook D stash group because those are like gold mines for getting expensive dies for super cheap. Um, so I will probably try to post below some, some links to alphabets that I would buy today. That are very similar like when I look at this one it immediately makes me think of that new one that doodlebug just put out because it's kind of a childish looking type of font and it's a taller and skinnier font whereas the other one that I have for my favorite things is more of like a short stocky chunky kind of kind of vibe to it so hopefully here I can't really tell on my software here if you guys can can really get the gradient. It looks really cute in person. This is one of those things where in the process, as I was doing it, I was even um, texting some friends and was basically telling them that I was the dumbest person on the planet to, to think it was a good idea to make my own fake thickers instead of just paying $5 for a pack of thickers. But end result, I do like them. Um, if this was a thicker font, I totally would have done another layer of inking and done like a pattern or something, or even like some splotchy splatter type thing. But these are so thin, it just, you wouldn't have been able to see it. Um, and then I used the Simple Stories Color Vibe Alphabet stickers that I was talking about, I think in my last video. I just really like those for being able to mix up your titles with different sizes and stuff. I'm still on this kick where basically my whole title is the same color. So I was really glad to see that the yellows that I had picked basically matched the yellow in the... It's not the brights. I think it's the lights pack that I used. Basically, it was just still out on my desk. So I went ahead and filled in the rest of my title with that. And then... I just kind of embellished a couple of the Easter eggs on that pattern paper just to kind of bring, I guess, a little bit more product onto that side of the page. I don't think there's anything wrong with just having a title over there. I really am just trying to make sure that I'm not necessarily hoarding my supplies. Like the whole point of this is for me to use them up. So it's not one of these things where I want to use it just for the sake of gluing it onto a page, but I also want the page to feel 
somewhat balanced in a sense. Um, and then from here on out, I'm basically just going to kind of cut up my little photos here to fit behind this this die. If I can figure out where I bought this one, I'll link it to because this one's a really good one. It was this little film strip. There's a like film reel, I guess you would say, and a good sized Polaroid that were all in the same set. So it's just a good basic set to have. And then I still remember specifically that I printed these photos to be 1.3 inches wide by one inch high. And it gave me just a little bit of a white frame around it. So I could have gone, I could have gone a little bit bigger, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to do when I printed my photos. So I was kind of glad that these ended up working out. Um, oh, and I did want to go ahead and say, I feel like I already talked to you guys, but I realized that when I did talk to you guys, it was me filling part of a Workspace Wednesday video, which I'm hoping... It will not, no, I'm looking, today's Thursday, it's not going up this week. Um, basically, I need to reset for the month and kind of go over just some, some different things that are going on. I have not uploaded a video probably in at least a week, I think probably just during our hop. I finally replaced my desktop computer, so we can all give my husband a round of applause on that one. I hate shopping for that kind of stuff, but I was sort of limping along and basically doing half of the things that I need to do on the desktop and half of the things that I need to do on my laptop. And I personally just don't like working on a laptop. I like being able to work on a large monitor with a real keyboard and a mouse and stuff like that. So I am, you know, trying to get all the things that I would normally be using set up on this new computer. However, the video editing software that I was using was a free one, um, which apparently they don't support on whatever version of Windows this is. It doesn't come loaded. And I use Photoshop Elements to edit my photos and crop them and print them at home. And I have a um, like disk version. So I was like, oh great, I'll just reload it on here. No, I'm missing disk two out of three. So finally I gave up went onto Adobe's site and was about to download just whatever the newer version of Photoshop Elements is. And I was looking at the price of it and I was like, eh, it's okay. And then I saw that they had for not very much more, I could get like their baby version of their video editing software. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get the bundle and force myself to learn a new a new software when I'm really not in the mood to do that or to scrapbook. So the last two days have been interesting. I've been, I would say Googling, but it's more like looking stuff up on YouTube, trying to figure out, okay, if I was using this thing in Photoshop, where does this thing live now 10 years newer? So in simple things, like I'm not doing crazy things in Photoshop. Basically, I use it to, again, I edit my photos. I print them from there. I make my thumbnails in there. I crop my, like the photos of my finished layout, I crop in there. And then I resize them for web sizing to be able to post in forums and galleries and in, even in here in my video and stuff. So just like I'm not doing anything crazy. And it was just like I was feeling those feelings that where you're just like, I don't like, I don't like technology. Like, I don't like change. Like, just give me my old stuff, but I want it to work. So there's definitely been some growing pains. Um, I don't know if you guys will notice a difference in the video editing or just viewing it. I'm hoping not, but it's definitely taking me a little bit longer just to kind of figure out what's what in a sense. So here's my completed layout. My still pictures are very still. I haven't figured out how to animate them yet. And I, again, I love chatting with you guys in the comments. I appreciate every view, every thumbs up. I love it here. I love hanging out with you guys. And again, I appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to come hang out with me. And I hope that you are enjoying this series and I hope that you guys are staying safe and I will catch you guys in another video. Bye.